and welcome back home built helps tip of the week this week we have four for the price of one that is four short tips and hopefully one of them will be of interest and have some use for you let's take a look our first tip is to demonstrate a battery powered rivet gun this is the pop brand PB2500 the most obvious benefit is that you're not dragging a compressor airline around as you go and rivet but it is also very handy to have the portability of a rivet gun like this we had our nose piece grounded so that it would work on the Zenith line of kits and another benefit is that it doesn't have a tremendous jarring action when you pull a rivet. It is much smoother. Excellent. Our second tip has to do with dealing with large sheets of aluminum that you use in a metal airplane. Rather than leave them flat on the ground, it is best to roll them up and you can affix the rolling with either a clamp or even clecos if there are some holes in the skin. But this way you're not stepping on the aluminum, you get to examine the sheets way ahead of time and then they're very easy to manipulate once you need to actually start working on them. Remove your clamp or Clico and then just unroll them and use them. Our third tip has to do with showing you the tool that is definitely well suited for long cuts in sheet metals like our aluminum. It uses a shearing action very similar to the hand tool that we presented in a previous tip. This unit is variable speed and of course now the straightness of the cut is dependent on the operator who is in control. There are also battery type devices like this for the utmost in portability. The tool is also ideal for other materials. In this example here, we're cutting a sheet of Lexan. Our fourth tip shows a way to create an office within your hangar. If you need a place to keep the dust and dirt and some noise out, why not consider building a greenhouse kit? An interesting way to make office space inside of a large hangar. Bonus tip. Whenever you can, be sure to attend a pancake breakfast fly-in. This one was from EAA Chapter 866 at Dunn Park in Titusville, Florida. Service with a smile. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank away. you. A smile. A smile. That's it. Are we going to chew? Yes. Over here, just a second. Morning. How many times have you been coming to this particular one? Probably five, six years. Five or six years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and the food quality? How do you like the food? Good. 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 Yeah. 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 yeah.
bands or whatever, but this is a key rail. And you came to this fly-in. How far away did you come from? Uh, about uh, 20 minutes from uh, Massey Ranch. Massey Ranch? And is this, this your first time here? Oh, no, no. We do it every month. Every month. Gotcha. So it's a regular thing to do. And um, is, do you find the food acceptable? Oh, it's awesome. Awesome. Very every good. time. Every time. Excellent. And um, do you have any advice for other people with airplanes that are looking for places to eat on the weekends? Yeah, you can find it by internet and uh, just do it. Just do it. Gotcha. Gotcha. And do you have any thoughts about the people who drive their cars into the uh, pancake thing? Uh, it's, o it's also okay to drive in, but then uh, they, sh they should have another line oh, no. to get the food. <laughs> The, the, the slower line, probably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> One nice thing about the pancake fly-ins is that you're at an airport and you can wander up and down the hangars and see who's working on what. A lot of interesting things. Now, this was a very cold day in Florida, so there should have been more hangar doors open, but you get what you get. Well worth the time to go to these pancake breakfast fly-ins.